This podcast is proud to be part of the Blueberry Network. That's blueberry with no E's dot com. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Transpersonal Radio with Angela Lynn Gibson. Remember, your thoughts upload your reality. Think wisely and always prepare to ignite. Welcome, Welcome to Transpersonal Radio. Transpersonal Radio. Real talk for real life. Inspiring podcasts. Exploring personal empowerment. empowerment. And transformation. Through parapsychology, spirituality, and how your thoughts Up. upload your reality. And now your host, Angela, Angela L. Gibson. First of all, thank you for listening. And a big thank you to my loyal listeners who have stayed with me throughout the years. Welcome to all you new listeners. I've been producing Transpersonal Radio since 2010. Not without challenges, for sure. But I'm proud that I'm in the sixth year of Transpersonal Radio, and it continues to get better every year. I'm going to ask my listeners to do me a favor. If you find value in this podcast, please be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, or download the iPhone app or Android app. And please, share this radio show with anyone you think may find it helpful, thought-provoking, or interesting. Also, please leave a great review for me on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spreaker, as that will help the reputation of the show and get it recognized by a wider audience. There's a lot of work that goes into creating and producing a podcast and radio show. Here's the thing, folks. Over the years, I've had some really amazing guests on this show, who speak from their core, who get real, who speak from a place of authenticity and integrity. These guests bring their A-game, providing you with quality content that can really make your life better. So by telling everyone you know about Transpersonal Radio and getting the word out, these guests really can make the world a better place. Thanks again for listening. Hello, Transpersonal Radio listeners. Tonight, we have a very special guest who is going to share with us her near-death experience, alien encounter experience, and various paranormal experiences. Juliana is going to share with us her story of how her extraterrestrial encounter and various paranormal experiences have influenced her music and paintings. Juliana says that alien interventions have a lot to do with her music and her art. She also explains how Aliens Encounter brought her to life and significantly changed it. She is going to share information about her past lives, including before birth and non-human reincarnation, and about spiritual worlds, including heavens and hells that she has experienced. Julianne will explain in detail about the advanced beings she met, what they are, and she'll tell us about their messages. Julianne Oka was born in Japan and is recognized as a world-class solo violin virtuoso. She has performed with the Vienna Radio Orchestra and also with the MGM Orchestra in Las Vegas with stars like Bob Hope and Dean Martin. It is thanks to Liberace's encouragement that she became a headliner for 20 years with her unique solo violin show on international cruise ships, in theaters, and on television around the world. On September 1, 2001, at her home and niche in southern France, Juliana received a powerful and mysterious electrical charge that entered her body, and afterwards, she suddenly became a painter. She then had 40 exhibitions, including seven one-woman exhibitions that were written about in the Miami Herald and L.A. Resistor. Her oil and watercolor paintings hang in fine art galleries, museums, and auctions worldwide. She is a graduate scholar of German philosophy and has traveled throughout the world living in 14 countries studying Indian creeds and Christianity in America. She is the author of One Life, Many Worlds, My Journeys Through the Heavens and Hells of Extraterrestrial Worlds, and God's Majesty in Color and Word. One Life, Many Worlds is the extraordinary life of Juliana Oka, a story of the non-human beings she encountered as a young girl in post-World War II Japan and again throughout her life, and of the paranormal events that led her along an unimaginable path. This nonfiction book is about her spiritual awakening, inspired by encounters with other worlds and their inhabitants. Juliana's Books is an awakening book for those on earth who are still in a long sleep 
to the other reality and other worlds. Her unique experiences, along with her research and descriptions, can endure logical verification. Juliana has traveled the globe, not just the physical world, but the inner worlds as well. She is a woman with a purpose. Her story will change how people will look at the reality of alien encounter. Juliana resided in New York City and Niche, France for 20 years before moving to Southern California, where she now travels doing speaking gigs, workshops, and provides a lot of information about her fascinating and interesting journey and interaction with the paranormal and extraterrestrials. And thank you so much for being here this evening, Juliana. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you very much, Angela, for inviting me. Yes, yes. So there's so much to cover here, so much going on. Let's start, I guess, at the very beginning.、Um, now, let me just be clear. Did you have your near-death experience prior to the alien encounter, or was this afterwards? Afterward. Okay, so. Okay, first let me into it.、Uh, English is my second language. Absolutely. So I just want you to know, but I try to,、uh, I try my best. You、It's、bet, like, no、uh, problem. Okay.、Uh, yes,、um, I had three near death experiences. That happened. First one is 17 years old when I committed, attempted suicide. And 20 years old when I fell into some pits, and 28 years old, I had a quite a different kind of out of body experience in the universe. So I did have three near death experiences.、Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. So can you share with us any details about those as far as? What that was like for you, what, and this is a particular area of interest for me because I've had a near death experience, several myself, and I speak to this、uh, when I'm out giving、uh, workshops、oh. and classes. So, what I'd, I'd really love to hear from you, Juliana, is some, ex- some of the things that you personally experienced during your near death experiences, what you saw, what you encountered, what it was like for you. Uh, the first one happened at、uh, age 17. That was one of the terrifying e x p e r i e n c e because I committed suicide. Yes. So I remember clearly the gray vacant space I went through. And I would, my body was floating. But my conscience was clear. I, I could see, I could、um, feel everything, I, but my body was floating and on and on going through to the vacant gray space.、Mm. Then I saw the tunnel. Then all of a sudden, because I realized I died at that time. So then all of a sudden, beginning, I was not sure what happened to me. And、uh, because I did not have、uh, any feel- feelings to my body, I did not feel any pain or just neutral. And I did not know what happened. Then I, started, then I realized I committed suicide. Then in that time, I saw the tunnel. As soon as I So the tunnel, my body started to move so fast and into the tunnel. Then I was so scared. Then I thought it end w i l l come. So then next time when I realized I was in another world, that was some kind of another planet or a very strange world. And,、um, the, Just like everything, like,、uh, nothing but the rocks. Then I was、uh, sitting in there and I had tremendous sadness.、Mm. And I did not understand what happened, and, but I know exactly the same kind of feeling I had. And,、uh, but I still did not understand I died because I was so alive. Much more alive than I am now on earth. So I never felt I died. 
And also, I never thought after my death, I end up that such a、um, horrendous place. Yes. Now, were there any beings at this place, or was it just rocks no, and nothing? Nothing in there. Nothing. So then, then I went through、um, what happened to my, all my life, I actually I went through. Then, come to the end, I realized that I committed suicide. I took、um, 40 sleeping. Yes.、Mm. And yeah, so that's you know,、uh, about 10 of them enough to kill me. Yes. But 40 of them. So、um, then I realized committing suicide was a sin because my grandfather committed suicide when Japan lost the war. And because he worked with the emperor, and many people worked in the emperor. It was honorable things to do、uh, to commit suicide.、Mm-hmm. So I did not realize that committing suicide was so big thing. So, but when I noticed, I really regretted and I asked help. I asked help、uh, from, uh, from God.、Mm-hmm. And, but nothing happened. Then I went through so much mental torment. What would happen because n- no living creature was there? I'm the only one. And、uh, how could I live in here, such an ugly place? And、um, I was so desperate. I, never saw this. I have never so desperate. But then, the, because God, could, God did not help me, I thought maybe aliens come to help me because they came to. Help me on earth when I was six years old. So that means, and they, they said they came from far away to earth to help me. So that means if they came to help me to earth, they should come, they can come to help me in this place, in this world.、Mm-hmm. So I called with all my heart. And I saw. The being standing, he wore a white gown, and the light, the aura is around him. I was so amazing, things I saw it, and he started to talk to me. And it、uh, seemed like you know, I talked about, he talked to me about one hour, something like this, all k i n d of things he talked to me. Then I started to ask. Many questions and he answered all of them. Then he told me, Go back, I will be with you. Then I came back. An emergency medical team was there, and I, my heart was stopped, I was cold, but I just came back by, by, on my, on my,、uh, by myself. And it, normally, I could have, my, my brain could have been damaged. Right. However, miracle happened. Wow. Doctor examined the whole thing, nothing, because I already knew、I'm, I don't need a doctor because I never felt so great in my life. Wow. Anyway, they did all k i n d of e x a m and they found nothing wrong with me. And I did not go to school for a year. But next day, I went back to school, and it was the time for the final exam. I never even opened one page of the textbook. But I had the confidence to, ha- to, to have this exam. And I, I insisted I would like to take an exam. Then another miracle happened. I was almost the top, and I, w- I was not a student at all. However, miracle happened. Then that happened to 17 years old, old and 18 years old. A few months later, I took e x a m to university and also I passed nearly the top. Wow. Something happened during、mm-hmm. my death experience. So then, after that, I studied German philosophy, existential philosophy in the university, and I graduated top. So, this is something, you know,、um, it was a horrendous experience, horrendous experience, but 
changed my life. That near this first near death, death experience. Wow. Wow. Now you death. had your first alien interaction though when you were six. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Was it scary for you? I mean, you were so young. No, no. actually, um, that that happened outside of Tokyo in a rice fields. And that day, one particular day, I found something small, tiny disc floating in the air. I never seen that thing, and I tried to catch. And every time I tried to catch it, they disappeared. And I repeated a few times. Then all of a sudden, I would lift up to the sky. Then when I realized I was inside of the uh, the room, then I saw the beings, and they are tall. Nothing like scary, you know, small being grays. No, if I saw that, I would be would be frightened, have mm-hmm. frightened. But no, they are tall, and more look like look like uh, more human. Mm. And uh, they started talk to me. And they said, we came to help you. So then automatically, I thought they were sent by God mm. because I was only six years old. I did not know much. And my mother, because I was born, a lot of medical problems. And I was my health was at stake. So my mother had been praying to God for my healings. So then this alien being said, they came from far away to earth to help you. And they said, they, they know me. They know you for long, uh, we know you for a long time. So that they said. So automatically, I thought they were sent by God. So I was, I was delighted for their arrival. Mm-hmm. Then, all of a sudden, I remembered my non-human life. That I lived ancient times, many, so many years ago. So I lived. So, in, so yes. you had a non-human life, meaning also extraterrestrial or alien. I lived as a non-human being, someplace mm. in the universe, and I right away I knew they came to bring me back to their world. Mm. And that world is so much better than Earth. Tell us about that world. What is it like? That world is just like a more heavenly world. And after that, when I was 10 years old, they took me to their, that world. And I saw exactly what, I, you know, what kind of world and what kind of being lived. More angelic being. The area I met, on the on in in their ship, they are my opinion. I think they are robots, and they were created by to in order to come to travel universe. And the the world once I lived, the habitant in there was more angelic beings, nothing like the non-human being I saw on the on the on their ship. In their ship, and um, but another world I once lived and also I visited when I was ten years old. More angelic beings mm. lived over there, and the whole world was created by the lights. Uh, more like uh, when I was walking, more like flying, and uh, the arc. Architecture, the the city I visited was amazing, super modern, high technology worlds. Wow! World. So that. So, what can you tell us about the angelic beings? What were they like? What did they look like? They look like more in you know, uh, more uh, the human, but the human looks like, but they most. The angelic being wear white gown, more transparent, and uh, taller than human. Uh, they, I communicated with them. And in those days, of course, I did not know any other language but Japanese. Mm-hmm. And I understood what they said because in there I saw angel played violin. 
And he said, you will be, you must practice violin because you will be a violin performer and travel all over the world. So that he said. So that made me to become, to continue violin and became a professional violinist. And when I saw the amazing color, the nature, the color struck my, my whole beings. And I was drawn to the colors. And in that time, I felt healing power. In that day, the seed to become a painter was sown.、Mm. Because of the colors I saw, the image I saw, now I wanted to create. So that happened September 1st, 2001. Suddenly my hand started to move and created the paintings without, without any trainings. And interest, earlier interest, because I will have been a music business.、Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, one day, I became a painter. So that seed was painted in another world.、Mm-hmm. In a bio,、uh, the violin, Korea, and the painting of Korea both started in the another world、uh, by the angelic beings. Now, But, was, now you're talking、yeah. about your experience that you had when you had the. Mister, like the electrical charge that went through your body. Yes. And so, do you feel that was angel energy or alien energy or、uh, some other being energy coming through and, and putting that electrical charge through you? That energy came from the another world I visited, heavenly worlds, I,、uh, heavenly places I, place I visited. Came from there because that day when I saw that scenery, I had exactly the same electric ch-、um, the charge came through my body. And I was drawn to the color. And someday I want to paint this because those days there is no color photo.、Mm-hmm. So only the way to capture the, the image is painting. So that's the only day in my life. I ever wanted to become a painter. Wow. So that energy came to me. So now, the, the alien beings that came to you when you were a young girl、uh, who came. Now, so I just want to recap there because it's so interesting. You had a lot of health issues when you were small, when you were young. And so your mom continued to pray for your well being and for you to heal and get better. And then you had this encounter with the alien beings taking you up to their craft when you were in the rice fields in Japan. Now, after, after that, did you see an increase? Were you healthier? Did you feel better? After that, after I visited when I was 10 years old, when I visited to, the,、uh, to another world, actually, they took me to the another world with the、uh, vehicle. Because I knew I, was, I woke up when I was 10 years old. I also I, I,、uh, I woke up in their vehicle and I saw from outside, from the window, that we are approaching to some place, some world, another world. Okay, so after that, you know, I was, I, I got, I, when I saw the beautiful color and the scenery, I felt healing power.、Mm. So then after I came back, From that world, completely, my sickness is completely healed. Wow. Wow. Ten years I struggled. I, had, I needed to have a heart surgery. I needed to have many surgeries. None of them. Everything went perfect. Since then, I became the healthiest person I knew. Fantastic. <laughs> So let's,、uh, let me ask you about you.、Um, how many different types of extraterrestrials or alien beings have you encountered, and, and how are they different? Have they all been friendly? What has been your experience? 
uh, when I was six years old in, a, in their vehicle. I did not know that, that was a vehicle. I, I re- realized that was a room, machinery room. I saw a lot of machines and I saw the circular windows. And I was on the table. So in that time, in that time, I saw ten of, about ten of them. They all look like same to me, no different. They all, they look like all the same. And the height and the size, everything is identical almost. And one of them came to me and he told me he knew, you know, they knew me for a long time. And in that day, I know, I also felt I know them.、Mm. I knew them in some way. Then, in that, seems like I was sort of hypnotized. Then, all of a sudden, I remembered the life I had in, a, in you know, somewhere in the universe. So, then, when 10 years old, when I visited to the heavenly world, in that time, the Those are entirely different beings.、Mm. On the,、uh, um, on, in, the, in the machinery room, they are to me more robot. Okay. okay. So I think the angelic beings in another world, wherever it is, they created those kind of beings so they can travel because they don't come to us, those angelic beings. So they create, because, you know, I was、uh, just a little girl, I did not know anything because those days, I, we, I did not, we, my family did not even have t- TV, washing machine, nothing. So I did not know anything, science fiction things at all. So I, then I did not scare, because they,、uh, there is n- nothing scared about, about them. They are very calm and,、uh, I felt good actually because I know they came to bring me back to their world. So when I was very, when in that time, I did not understand how they connected because alien beings I met, they were silver outfit, metallic outfit. And they don't, you know, they did not have any facial expressions.、Mm. And, but, In angelic beings, was more smiling and、uh, more, like an angel. And they, you said they, the angelic beings are more transparent. Yes.、Mm. Th- yeah, that I, I, yes, because every whole world,、uh, that their world is more made by like, like、uh, lights. I don't, I, I don't know how I did not, that, but I was walking in their world. And I watched many,、uh, was i t the center of the city. Huge, amazing, tall buildings, but the buildings' architecture is nothing like on earth.、Mm. And something appeared, you know, staircase appeared to the heaven and disappeared, you know, something in above. It's not real third dimensional, it,、uh, it's hard to explain. And the colors, yes, they are amazing color, but more gold shining.、Mm. I think gold, gold shining world. That's the place I visited. Nice. Let's talk a little bit, Juliana, about the different spiritual worlds, the difference between the heavens and the hell. Now, of course, a lot of people have a Christian idea of what that's like. Uh, what did you experience?、Uh, first,、um, I would like to mention about hell. Sure.、Uh, that happened when I was 17 years old.、Uh, first of all, after I met a l i e n after I encountered a l i e n I started to have a lot of paranormal things. First, I started to see the spirits, I started to hear from them, and I started to see the another dimension. All kinds of things started to happen before I did not have. After I met aliens, many, many、um, different kinds of things started. Then, when I was 17 years old, 
from my bedroom. I think my bedroom turned to the, the gateway to the another dimension. One day, I walked up to my bedroom. Then, normally, I'm hit, I, was, I thought I was hitting to the bedroom, my bed.、Mm-hmm. But I walked into some another world. It, it's the most unbelievable things happened when I was 17 years old and 18 years old. Um, I think my bedroom turned to the gateway. I think the gate was opened up in that particular time and I walked into the another dimension. This is un- one of the most unexplainable things that happened, but it's continued for two years. Wow. wow. And、uh, I tested to my sister. You know, can you walk this place? Because there is one spot. I always went in from that spot, went into the another place, not the earth. So I needed evidence because I did not understand what's going on with me. But I'm constantly going to another world and come back to my bedroom. So then in that time, I entered to hell. So, not, not because I did something wrong, no, I didn't. And that is experience, and because Arian wanted me to know many different words,、mm-hmm. including hell. So, I visited and I saw what's going on, like in hell. No. So,、um, I was mentally tormented just watching. What's going on in there? And I told to my mother, my parents, what happened. And they thought, you know, I had a mental, you know, they thought a mental case.、Mm-hmm. And they took me to the mental hospital. But of course, I'm not nothing wrong. I was com- completely normal. But that's what happened. And also, I visited to. Happen from there that my committing suicide, suicide like、uh, 17 to 8 about that time, because no one understood me what I'm going through. And、uh, when, I, when I saw in, I saw my ancestor in hell. So that really tormented me.、Uh, Because I was only you know, 17 years old, I did not understand why I had to go through this kind of, you know, all of my sisters, just a normal you know, student, but I'm the only one having this thing. So I told my you know, family, and they thought I'm crazy. And I, or before that, you know, I also told about an alien encounter, and no one believed me. So you know, I was kind of、um, stopped. Talking anymore since 10 years old. I, actually, a l i e n told me to not talk anymore. So you know, I stopped talking. So you know, actually, I started to talk about the a l i e n experience since last year because I、uh, stopped talking any, anything because I have been, I had a great career. So you know, I don't want anything to interfere to my career. Sure. So, sure. so you know, I stopped talking, but a l i e n told me. And angelic beings also told me, someday I must write. I must tell everything what happened outside of Earth.、Mm-hmm. Now, Julian, when you had these first experiences that you were talking about, when you first w- thought you were going to your room and you opened a door and it was like a portal to another dimension, and at that point you descended into or Walked through a portal into a world that was hell. At that time, were you Christian or did you have a concept of the biblical, the Christian version of heaven and hell, or was this a completely new experience for you? Uh, this is a new experience to me, but my background my father is a Buddhism, 
And、uh, in Japan is the Shintoism. And my father is Buddhism. My mother is Christian. So I was trained those kind of things.、Mm-hmm. But not many people told me about hell too much. More they are emphasizing the he- heavens.、Mm-hmm. Um, then I learned when I, get,、uh, when I was at university, I learned Dante, you know, Italian. Yes. You know, yes. Form. So, you know, very similar things I saw.、Mm, wow.、Well. Now, how did that change your viewpoint on the reality here in this world? Meaning, a lot of people in this world、uh, may not even think about heaven or hell or. Have any belief system around that. So, how did, how did your life change after your interaction with alien beings and angelic beings and traveling to these other worlds? My mission is to tell to people that life is not just only Earth and only human beings. This is only one experience as a human being. So, we had to think not,、um, my message is not a specific religion beyond that.、Uh, this is something we, can, we must see from a universal view because there is an alien exist in the, in the, actually, many of them. Because they told me there are a lot of beings in the universe. And I saw one of them in angelic beings, and they Created robotic beings to send to Earth to connect it to me. Because when I was little, I only could understand when I see the,、uh, the material things. So then, material being I met, that b e c o m e not just only spiritual experience, because I met. The beings that is the third dimensional beings I met, and they told me as that connected me to the another, I said they are the messenger to, bring, to let me know. Because otherwise, other than that, if I did not meet them, I don't, I'm not sure if I could have ever remembered my non human being, non human life. Yes. So, That means I had to tell people because many people just think that life is like the way it is,、mm-hmm. and after we died, they, they are not sure, and they are only thinking more on earth time. And many religions talk about heavens and hells, but there is、um, some other planet, or I don't know, the, some world. So many things exist in the universe. So that's so fascinating to me because you've had multiple experiences with this since you were a very young child and then all throughout your life. Now, do you still have contact with alien beings even today, or do they not talk to you anymore, or angelic beings? What's going on with that now?、Uh, now they are waiting for me to finish my mission. Actually, I never wanted to talk something like this because, first of all, you know, I, don't, I had a good career you know,、mm. and the entertainer I was doing great, and、um, I didn't want to even you know, to mention something like this.、Mm-hmm. But they have been warning me you know, because I had so many sightings all over the world. Yeah. And they, come, they came to give me the message, and they, sometimes they said, Wake up, you know, what are you doing? Those kind of you know, thing,、uh, messages they keep sending me. And now finally I said, I just couldn't take it anymore. So you know, I said, I, I'm going to write the book. So because I cannot talk well, I thought because、I'm, I write everything、uh, in the book so people understand. Yes. So, but I did not want to. Talk personally because, first of all, it is very complicated ish, things I had. Even though in Japanese I cannot talk well what I ha- when I went through. So now talking English is out of my hand. So I said, I don't want to talk. so But I wrote the book. So, one, my mission is, you know,、uh, is, uh, ac- accomplished. That's the way I wanted to feel.、Yes. But I wanted to think, you know, that way. But 
um, seems like they they are pushing me. <laughs> the Koreans <laughs> are pushing me to do something, you know, to approach more. Yes. So yes. I was kind of pushed. So that's why I'm doing it. Wonderful. Now, you so these alien beings uh, and the angelic beings, as they are interacting and, and giving you these messages, what do you think is one of the most important messages that advanced beings have for human beings on Earth? A uh, human being, human beings is, uh, the life is so short and we have so many sufferings during time. And um, the life is nothing like this. That I find out when I visited in another world. I, my concept changed completely because people, we normally think you know, life is just like a human life and human is a very advanced being and um, God chosen is a human, you know, especially Christianity say that. Uh, completely turned over because life is nothing like this. And at this moment, so many planets, some other, another place in the universe, many beings have amazing knowledge and technology and high art, artistic, everything, creativity, so many things happening. And their life, they do not have... Uh, even though they had death, would be uh, entirely different range, million, 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 uh, some, something like this. So when we started to think on the earth, we lose, host, uh, we lose the path in a way because now when we look at when uh, we look at the world, they are fighting religion, religious fight, mm-hmm. and uh, they are insisted their religion is the, the best, and if they don't convert, you know, they started to have a war, you know, all kinds of things going on at this moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, the people are just fighting for the, um, the uh, all kind of desire uh, offered from the, this world. So then we are caught up with this. And once I did... So that's why alien, they came so many times to wake up, wake up, wake up. Those kind of messages they are sending me because once I saw it, but now when I came to America, I had to, I, I have been single all my life and I never depending on any person because I already committed with it. Seems like, you know, I already made a commitment with the alien. Mm. And the angel things. So I'm not interested. I have no interest to get married with a human and to make you know human regeneration. I'm not interest I have no interest anymore. Mm-hmm. And since I met them. So um they are guiding me. They are leading me. The place once I lived. And I have to understand this, but now I realized many people had non-human life. But after we were born as a human, we forget everything. Yes. Right? So that's why I had to tell maybe so many people had non-human life. And if we caught up too much earthly thing, we will reincarnate again human. And human life, we had to suffer so many, so many things we had to suffer. Now I'm suffering, and again, you know, lately, I have been healthy, so healthy so many years. Now I'm having physical problem. So that made me to rush to finish my mission Mm -hmm. because this is a human reality. When we get old, we have more sufferings and we come to the end. It's a very short period of time. So we had to end this kind of cycle. So this one is not only for me, for everybody needs to know from where we came from and what kind of life we had to live. So that's determined 
determines the next life. Yes. So what so your mission, Julian, is to share with everyone what these advanced beings are trying to get us to understand, both the alien encounters and the a, the a, angelic beings trying to get humans to understand, understand that there's more than just what's on this earth. There's more than just what's going on that we see day to day. There's more to life than what we can even imagine. There are so many other worlds and other beings and other ways of thinking and living. This is your message that you're trying to share. Yes, there is a hell and heavens and many heavenly worlds. Mm -hmm. We can not too much determine our life. We know to, we have to widen our view to the universe. Mm -hmm. That's okay. one thing. And also, uh, my mission and my my purpose is I must end human life. So that's the, that's the reason they came, because it is a time I end human life. But before that, I have a mission to do. So those are the things that I had to do because they are guiding me the path. So this is my mission. Then my experience to tell to people. So this is the reason for the alien encounter. Mm -hmm. So the the um, point is that we need to understand that, of course, human life ends, but there's something else beyond that. Is that what you're saying? There are a lot. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things. Just to, because some uh, many radians Jones says just the heaven and the hells uh, that between hell, heaven and the hells there are a lot of words in the universe some we cannot see in in our eyes mm -hmm. but with another eyes we can see it so but there is a lot of there are a lot of things in the universe mm -hmm. now did these alien beings or angelic beings did they explain to you how how uh, people get chosen to go to different places so if, for example if a human life ends what is the determining factor if it, if that the consciousness survives the human death it, what is what determines if it goes to heaven goes to hell or goes to another world or another universe or another planet Okay, so now when I was 28 years old, I had an, another near-death experience. That is, um, when I was sleeping, that continued one year. Uh, when I was sleeping, and um, uh, just before I fell in sleep, my spirit's body raised up from the physical body and started to walk in the space and uh, keep walking and then when I looked up, looked back and down, I could see my physical body lay down in the bed. So now I know that's not in you know, the physical body. It's just only the, the material thing. But me, spiritual being, was walking in this the space, and I came to the veil, that is thick curtain. Mm -hmm. And I know this is a boundary. We cannot pass. But I need to pass. Because though, though that day, uh, you know, though that time when I was 28 years old, alien called me to come back. So since that day, I started to have all the time out of body experiences that uh, continued for a year practically almost every night. And many times I, you know, um, I did not achieve to the veil, but sometimes I achieved the veil. Then when I tried to pass through, but I couldn't pass through because there is no opening, no gate, nothing. So mm. the curtain does not move. So then when I look at my body and uh, when I thought, what I'm, uh, should I do? Then all of, uh, the, um, I was pulled back, my spiritual being pulled back to my physical body. So then I woke up with jacks. So, but once in a while, I passed that veil. 
I passed will power. So when I passed, I saw the universe. And I saw, I was flying and I saw the white, white cord was shining, was attached to my back. And that end was earth. I saw the earth and I was flying in the universe. When I was completely detached from the thought of earth, I would keep moving. But sometimes I thought, what shall I do? And I started to think I'm only 28 years old. What happened if I die? What happened to my parents? Then I was pulled back to my body. Then I woke up, you know, almost my my heart was uh, cut off, you know, my uh, heartbeat was cut off. I was a cold sweat and I woke up and I barely, you know, uh, survived. But if I did not think that, and I know that white cord was loose and I could go to the another world. Mm. This is another one way to transform to the another world. But you know, people see me, my dead body, but I'm not really dead. I was just, uh, I left my body. Then I could transfer to the another world because they called me to come back. But I had a choice. They never pushed me what I should do. Mm-hmm. But they told me what I, sh- what I should do is my mission. So, but other than that, they uh, quite many times I had a choice, you know, but they never pushed me what I should do. Everything I could, I, that was my choice. So I did not go to their world and I stayed in here. I stayed on earth. But if that happened now, yes, I would be mm-hmm. no, you know, that I keep going. Mm-hmm. Then that I will end human life without pain. So, so that means, you know, uh, life continuously goes because when I left, every, everybody, when they are sleeping, they, that spirits move out mm-hmm. and they don't remember, but they are all moving out and you know, go wandering somewhere. And uh, I experienced because that happened almost practically every single day for one year when I was 28 years old. So I remember exactly what happened. Then when I passed the veil, beyond the veil, some other things happening. So then I could leave my body. That means, you know, after my death, it's exactly the same thing. My spirit travels to another place. Mm. But to where? That is important. Since mm. I saw the hell, so I had to tell people to never get into the place. Nobody could suffer, you know, there's, there's no place to go. So, you know, how to live this life in order to go to a better world. Mm-hmm. Other, than, other than that, as Buddha said, you know, if we are caught up, you know, attachment is the one bringing the reincarnation to human being again, and we make another graves. And in the meantime, we have to suffer many things and the body decay, or the age and the sadness, all kinds of things comes together. Mm-hmm. That's the experience, and we got to learn what is life, human life all about. And to understand from this point how to live and how to exceed human realm. So then to there is so many amazing world we can enter. So you know our death doesn't mean you know just only this the, the, the life on earth is experienced to training a period of time to understand, but just they forget that and they seek some, you know, the position and money or whatever. So that is, that is uh, not the person you know, we should take because now I know the whole, I understand, I learned so many things in another world. So it's pity if they don't. They don't work this. You know, they, at least they should be aware. Mm-hmm. So awareness makes people change. Absolutely. You have that. That is exactly right, Julian. 
that you so I and I've often said that people who really seem to wake up, who really seem to be aware are those people who have gone through the struggle, who have gone through trauma or near death or these various experiences. And in a lot of ways, you can say that's someone's personal hell when they go through all of these trials and traumas and and all of these things that people go through. And it does make you wake up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, in your book, Julianne, the... um, you have two books, One Life, Many Worlds, and God's Majesty in Color and Word. How do people find those books if they'd like to purchase them? Uh, it's uh, uh, Amazon, and also uh, all my information is in my website. So if they contact me, and I do have a copy, I can send personally with my business card and um, uh, things. And uh, also they can get from um, Amazon Barnes Noble. And also my um, my publisher, many other ways they can find. And when I do event, I always bring one. Wonderful. And how about your paintings? How do people purchase your paintings? Uh, many people ask me, asked me. So I make, I try to not, uh, I sold many original, but um, many times I make a duplication. Mm-hmm. And I, um, if they purchase it's also, they can find out from my website what kind of painting I have. Wonderful. And I will make sure that I include your website on my Transpersonal Radio website so that people can find you. But yes. it's uh, juliannaoka.com, correct? correct? Right. Okay, excellent. No, julioka, julioka.com. Julioka. Okay, yes. perfect. And Julia, I just want to, I want to thank you so much much for doing this interview with me i know it was difficult for you because as you said english is not your first language japanese is your first language and besides this is my first time oh <laughs> but you did great and i'm just so I'm thankful so that you I'm took the time sorry. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this and and for sharing you know just you have so many fascinating experiences and so many fascinating interactions that you've had throughout your life and i just really appreciate you sharing that with us thank you very much for inviting me absolutely and transpersonal radio listeners if you would please visit juliana's site again i'm going to put the information on transpersonalradio.com it's julioka.com but i will make sure to add that in the show notes so that you can go to her website find out more about uh, her and her experiences you will be able to find her books which i would highly recommend i have not read them myself yet but i plan to because i just find the information so fascinating and juliana is just wonderful and has had so many interesting experiences all throughout her life with alien encounters with near-death experiences and with paranormal experiences and uh, just really valuable information that she shares with us so that we understand that of course as we talk about on transpersonal radio all the time that This is not the end, and we have a lot of uh, different experiences waiting for us as our consciousness survives the death of a physical body, and and Juliana was sharing that with us this evening. So go ahead and check out her website, find out more about her, what she's up to. If you're in the Southern California area, she does go around and provide speaking uh, engagements and workshops about this topic, so be sure to find out information about that, and... Again, as always, until next week, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Trans Transpersonal Radio. If you'd like to suggest a future future topic or be a guest, guest visit transpersonalradio.com. Call the hotline at 619-800-6057 or, or like our page, facebook.com slash transpersonalradio.